Okay, all we are live. It's about a minute early. LaShawn, I have you on speaker, <laughs> on speaker view. Oh, are you, you want me to speak exactly at seven, right? Good evening. On behalf of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Beta Pi Omega Chapter, and our president, Ms. Katrina Oa, I welcome each of you to our annual 2020 Impact Day for Caregivers. To Mrs. Elise Hensley, Mrs. Christian Dismu, Mrs. Jasmine Gibson, thank you for being a part of our celebration. I would also like to thank Mrs. Wanda King, Mrs. LaShawn Kelly, Mrs. Nakia Simpson, and Mrs. Jasmine Gibson. These ladies exemplify excellence. Our international president, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover, chose to emphasize five days in the year referred to as impact days. Caring for caregivers is the fifth and last impact day of the year. Dr. Glover in her message to us earlier today stated, there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need a caregiver. To the members of the caregiver community, please know that Alpha Kappa Alpha occurs for you, and we are thankful for the opportunity to demonstrate our support and appreciation to you on this third annual Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Caregivers Day. You are welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is LaShawn Kelly and I am the co-chairman of Women's Health and Wellness Committee. We will begin this evening program with prayer by Mrs. Kia Pointer. She is the co-chairman of our meditation committee, and she's the first lady of St. Mark Baptist Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Please take the time for our meditation. Thank you. If you would all please join me in a moment of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to care for others and for the blessing of rest. Thank you that when you've called us to minister to others, you call us to times of stillness so that we can hear your voice and get your guidance and your direction. Lord, it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. We confess now that we can do nothing apart from you. We can't rest apart from you. We can't care for those we love apart from you. So we lift up caregivers on tonight, Lord, those who do your work and need your rest. We pray you clothe them with compassion and humility and patience. Help them to walk in your gentle spirit. Give them your presence, Lord, your strength and your grace for the difficult days ahead. And give them your rest that they so desperately need to be effective. Now, Father, we thank you for allowing us to meet this evening in service and for sharing. We ask for your blessing upon our time together. We thank you for the speakers who will present and we ask that you allow the knowledge that they'll impart to equip, encourage, and uplift all that hear it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Porter, for that beautiful prayer and meditation. And as we begin um, our program, I would like to introduce our first speaker for this evening. Her name is Elise Hensley. She is a Little Rock native. She learned at a young age about the importance of community and family from attending church services with her grandparents. After graduating from Little Rock High School in 2006, 
she attended Pulaski Tech College and the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, where she received a bachelor's in science in health education and promotion. In 2014, she began working at the Alzheimer's Arkansas, where she helped develop multiple caregiver workshops and educational events reaching across Arkansas. And she worked on several such events as the Walk of Love and Night of Light, which raises funds to help provide respite reimbursement for caregivers. In January 2016, she began her studies at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, and she earned her master's degree in public health education and behavior. In February of 2020, Elise joined CareLink, Central Arkansas's Area Agency on Aging, as the Care Coordination Manager. She and her team assist the community members, homebound seniors, at-risk adults, caregivers, and their families to locate resources, and she assists with the needs of the community. Elise and her husband, Brad, are expecting their first child in early 2021. Congratulations. And they also have two dogs. She currently resides here in Little Rock. Elise, welcome, and we look forward to hearing from you about caring for the caregivers. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I'm so honored to be with you guys tonight. Um, I love that you're focusing on caregivers. Um, so many times caregivers are a for, forgotten community. And um, I love that you're bringing them to the forefront, bringing them to light. Um, so let's just jump in and get started. Um, when I was asked to do this presentation, um, I was kind of asked three questions. Uh, what recommend, uh, recommendations on how to be the most effective caregiver? What resources are available um, for caregivers through CareLink? And then what are some other resources that are available um, from the community? So kind of pulling in from my experiences, I have kind of created a slide. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And it should be up now. This is our, um, I'm just gonna start with how to be the most highly effective caregiver. Uh, the first thing I want you to think about is not to be perfect. Um, you can't be a perfect person. No one is perfect, we know that. Be realistic with what you want for your loved one and what you want for yourself. Uh, also realize that not everyone is a hands-on caregiver. Myself, um, when my mom was providing caregiver services for my aunt, my mom can be a caregiver. She can handle giving baths and doing things like that. That's not my gift. That's not my talent. I'm much better at, can I cook a meal? Can I provide some sort of grocery store service for you? So just realize that not everyone is a caregiver hands-on, but if you're not that hands-on caregiver, uh, if you're not providing that uh, unique and individualized service, you know, there are things that you can do, but don't wait to be asked. Always, always ask if you can help that hands-on caregiver, because they're the ones that um, forget to ask when, when they need help. If you are a hands-on caregiver, ask for help. You know, so many times there are people that say, how can I help? How can I help you? What can I do? And the caregiver will say, there's nothing I can think of. I don't need anything. And that's just really not true. So often we've had, I have worked with caregivers who, when we start talking about some things that people could help them with, they start mentioning, you know, it'd be so great if I could get somebody to come over and help me give a, get a break. That's something you can ask for. You can ask a family member to do that. You can ask a friend, you can ask a church member. Uh, you can ask someone to do that for you that you trust to come into your home and take care of your loved one. Which leads me to my second topic, take a break. As a caregiver, you need to take a break. Caregivers are an underserved population. They're not paid, they're not reimbursed or given any kind of um, compensation for their work. So take a break. When someone gives you that opportunity, do it. Um, taking a break from your caregiver duties can help you be a better person for your, yourself and for your loved one. And oftentimes caregivers are taking care of their own families along with adult family members who can't take care of themselves, um, which is what we call that sandwich generation where you have young children at home that you have to take care of, and you're also having to take care of your aging and adult parents. 
Um, what are some ways that you can take a break? So what does that mean? You can take a nap. That's a great way to take a break. You could go to the movies. You could go to the grocery store by yourself, go get your toes done. Um, you could walk outside and be outside within, uh, within nature. And, and if you enjoy that, go fish, whatever that is, that, whatever that looks like for you. And when you get that break, don't hover. Don't stay at your house if you don't have to. If that's something that would cause you um, some additional stressors, if there's something not being done right or something that's different than the way you would do it, if it would cause you more stress to be there when someone else is providing caregiving services, don't be there. Go out and don't hover. Um, and really get yourself that, give, that, give yourself that opportunity to take a break. Um, one thing I mentioned here in my notes is if you're gonna hire or receive assistance from a paid source, be really honest and upfront with what your expectations are, um, especially when you're paying someone to do a job for you. If you're using a service of some sort, if you have an expectation, be very upfront with them because they're not gonna know if something is, needs to be done in a certain way. You have that opportunity to tell them and they wanna know because they wanna do a good job for you. Um, educating yourself and others is really important, especially if you're dealing with a diagnosis like Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, there are so many unique um, nuances, so many unique things. Uh, when you meet, when, honestly, when you meet an Alzheimer's patient, you've met one Alzheimer's patient. It affects people so differently. It makes people uh, behave differently and their normal and reality is not our normal and reality. Um, so educate yourself, educate your family members. Don't let them educate uh, themselves with bad information. And then when you need to share information with your family members, share it and don't hold on to it and be the only person that can help it, that can, ho that can that holds on to that information so that you're the only person that can help your loved one. Um, again, it goes back to taking a break. Don't expect to be perfect. Don't hover, educate yourself. And then lastly, find your support system. That is the number one conversation I have with caregivers uh, at Alzheimer's Arkansas and now at CareLink. Who can help you? What does that look like? Start building that team. Um, is that friends? Is it neighbors? Is it family members? Is it community service agencies, agencies like CareLink or UAMS or Alzheimer's Arkansas? Who is it? What, what group of people, how many people do you need in your network? That's totally up to you, that's customizable. But what you do need is you need people, more than just yourself, more than just your husband, more than just your sister, you need people. Um, one of the really great opportunities with finding a support system is finding a support group. Um, a support group is an opportunity for a caregiver to speak freely without any hesitation, or judgment from, a, from the community because that community that they're speaking with is going through something very similar or the same thing. So those are kind of some of my hot topics when I talk about caregivers and how to be an effective caregiver. Um, don't expect to be perfect. Take a break. Don't hover. Educate yourself, educate others, and find your support system. And at CareLink, we would love to help you do that. Um, I just wanted to take a quick break just to see if there are any questions so far. Um, if there's not, I'll just keep going. So I'm going to keep going. So resources with CareLink. So what are some of the programs that CareLink offers that can help caregivers um, reduce their burden and help them on their journey? So most people know CareLink um, for our Meals on Wheels program. We've been offering it for many, many years. I think some of you are even on this call and maybe even on Facebook world hello Facebook world, our uh, former volunteers for um, our Meals on Wheels program. We have had to put that volunteer program on hold due to COVID, but we're still actively all, uh, delivering meals to clients every week, seven meals a week. And it's not based, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions with Meals on Wheels is that it's based on the income. It's not, it's based on need. It's based on if you need meals, um, do you drive? Are you homebound? Um, the 
Uh, the next thing on here I have is telephone reassurance. What telephone reassurance is, is that CareLink will call a senior adult, homebound senior adult, um, every day, every week to check on them, to just have a conversation with them to see if they're doing well. Um, oftentimes we find that they have some sort of need or service that they require that maybe their families didn't know about. And so we are able to go out and help that client with whatever services that they may have. I actually just had a lady who asked for a rollator, which is a Cadillac walker. It's got fancy wheels and everything, um, but you know, she could use it and it helps her maintain her independence within her home. And that's what we wanna do. Um, CareLink offers respite care grants for caregivers. And that's actually offered through another agency, Alzheimer's Arkansas. Um, in a minute, I'll have their, their contact information. Those respite care grants, are a great opportunity to take a break. It's a great opportunity to hire a service that you maybe haven't thought about hiring before or pay a family member who's already helping you, who can provide you that break and then you can feel a little bit less guilty or shameful or whatever you might feel about having them come in and help you. Um, when the senior centers are open, they're a great opportunity for our um, senior adults who can get out, um, who are able to travel on the bus or to drive themselves, those are both great options, um, to have some socialization. They play bingo, which is a very big deal um, with our senior adults. Um, some of the senior centers offer line dancing classes, exercise classes, along with a meal option so that seniors can come in and have some socialization, talk to other seniors, but then also have that opportunity to exercise or do whatever uh, makes them feel good. Right now, because of COVID, we're obviously closed. Most of our senior centers are closed. There are a few that are in operation in a very limited capacity, but all of those senior centers are still able and are still providing meals for our senior adults. Um, and they do that every day, every week, no, no breaks, um, except for holidays, I think. Um, we have a fantastic home care team at CareLink that can help provide attendant care and personal care. And what that means at CareLink is that we hire caregivers to come in um, and we train them and they're licensed and bonded through our agency. They're hired through us. So they're caregiver or CareLink employees um, and they help to provide services for senior adults. They can help clean a little bit. They can do laundry. They can do some like cooking. Um, there are a lot of things that senior adults just can't do 100% anymore, and they maybe don't need a full-time medically in staffed group of people coming into their home, but they really could use a little bit of help, and that's where CareLink can come in. We provide a new program called Supplemental Services, and that is specifically for the caregiver. That program is for a caregiver who has some sort of uh, they're taking care of a loved one and they have, they have some sort of need, an assistive device of some sort. So a rollator, which is a Cadillac walker, or some like incontinence supplies or things like that. It's such a new program for CareLink that we are working on the details of it. And I am super excited about it. I've already started it. But if you're interested in that, I'd love to share some more information about that. Um, our transportation team offers um, at no cost transportation for our senior adults within an 11 mile radius of our 2100 Pike Street office. And that actually for just so you know how far that out, out that is, it's all the way to Bass Pro. It'll take you all the way to Bass Pro and back to North Little Rock, which is a great opportunity for seniors. You don't have to use, uh, you don't have to use this just for doctor's appointments. You can use it for socialization. You can use it to go to Walmart and go to the grocery store or pharmacy. Um, it's a super great program where we are offering transportation at no cost for seniors and they don't have to have some sort of specialized um, programming or funding outside of that. We offer, um, lastly, we offer legal assistance in a translation service. So our, um, our senior adults oftentimes don't have access to free or at discounted rate legal services. So we can help provide that service for them. And our translation services are obviously, they translate for our Spanish speaking um, friends and families, um, but they can also translate for other languages too. And that helps us connect um, in areas where we would normally have some serious boundaries 
um, barriers into reaching into some of those communities. And then lastly, I just wanna mention, also provide programs, um, care part D evaluations at no charge for senior adults um, over the age of 65 receiving Medi Medicare Part D or if they've been um, disabled for a certain amount of time, they're also on a Part D plan. And they can compare their um, rates to make sure that they're getting the most beneficial um, medic medication rates possible. And um, that's a, a great opportunity for senior adults to lower their costs of their drugs so that they can continue to live independently. Oftentimes what I see with senior adults is they're paying $400, five, $600, or even more thousands of dollars in drug costs every year to their pharmacy and to their insurance plan. And frankly, they just don't have that kind of money. So we, the program, see what they're um, currently paying for and then what they could be potentially paying for um, and help them to make that decision. We are a non-biased organization. We're not supported by any insurance agency. So this is a non-biased conversation that we can have with seniors and then they can choose what they wanna do. Um, any questions so far? I don't see anything yet. Um, I am gonna make myself available. You have my contact information for questions if you do have any and then obviously my information and assistance departments down here too. And kind of that last question about resources outside of CareLink that I wanted to mention. Um, Alzheimer's Arkansas, which is where I came from in 2014. I was there from 2014 to 2020. I love Alzheimer's Arkansas. They are a fantastic organization. Their executive director is a lover of caregivers and she has a heart and passion for Alzheimer's disease and educating our caregivers. Um, and I have their contact information and I'll share that with the, um, with the ladies today so that you guys can get that if you're interested. But Alzheimer's Arkansas is a local organization. You can Google them and they'll come right up for you. Um, UAM, uh, Senior, Senior Living Solutions is a uh, organization that offers a no cost evaluation and assistance in helping a loved one move into an assisted living facility um, or, skilled living, or skilled nursing or independent living. They, um, are an organization that I worked with quite a bit. And they're very helpful, especially when someone's trying to navigate into how do I get into a nursing home? How do I pay for it? What do I do? I don't know where to start. They have resources and they can help you. And I have their contact information as well. I'll share that so that everybody can get their phone number. Again, they're Google. You can just Google them if you want to, Senior Living Solutions. Um, UAMS has a fantastic um, caregiver education program. And that's looking different from with COVID and things that are going on there, but they are able to provide some assistance for family caregivers um, learning about the learning about different diseases. I think they primarily will focus on a dementia class as well. So if you have a loved one with dementia or something like that, um, you can learn exactly what that looks like, what that is. I've been through the class myself. It's a fantastic class. I went through it in Hot Springs, um, and they also teach real skills. So if you have a loved one who's bed bound, they can help you show you how to roll over your loved one, transfer your loved one in a healthy and safe way for both of you. Um, however, if that's not something that you're interested in doing, that's not your caregiver style, you can hire an agency and they can help you do that as well. Um, they, I have their contact information as well and I can share that, I'll share that with everybody. Um, the uh, memory care and Alzheimer's units have um, respite care beds available. And you can use the um, respite care grant through Alzheimer's Arkansas I mentioned before. They offer a $500 respite care grant for a person who has a um, diagnosis uh, that requires a caregiver and is over the age of 60. And if you have a loved one who has memory issues, dementia, Alzheimer's, anything dementia related really, they may have a bed that you can use for respite and you can use it for the weekend. Great way to go and visit your family, great way to get a break. And you can also test out the services for that facility if that's something you're interested in. And then lastly, I would, I would just like to mention support groups again. They are 
so impactful, so important when you're thinking about your caregiver journey and how to be an effective caregiver. You need a safe place to talk. You need a safe place to share your thoughts and feelings. If that's not in, um, if that's not your style, you're not interested in a support group, maybe it's in journaling, but just find a way to release some of your frustration, your thoughts, your feelings, everything like that, that you're going through and know that you're not alone. Frankly, caregivers oftentimes feel like they're alone. They're not. You have a community. You have people that want to help you. Um, at CareLink, I would love to talk to you. At um, Alzheimer's Arkansas, they would love to talk to you about your caregiver journey and, and be whatever service um, they can to you. Uh, my contact information is down at the bottom. I don't want to take up too much time, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out via email or phone. And then I've also included our information and assistance team and their information, um, their email address, their phone number, our local number, and our 800 number if you've got some people that live out of town. So again, thank you so much for having me. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. You can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to answer those. But again, thank you. Thank you so very much, Elise. That was so informative and we really appreciate you taking out the time this evening to share with our caregivers. There was a lot of information that I'm sure uh, we probably didn't know, some caregivers did not know about. So I'm sure you'll be receiving a lot of phone calls and texts in the next um, few days. So we appreciate you very much. Again, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. Good evening, I'm Wanda King, and I would like to introduce you to our next guest speaker this evening, and it's Kristen Dismute. Kristen Dismute has been married for 12 years and has two children, Kendall eight, Dylan six. She has a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Services Administration from the University of Central Arkansas in Conway, Arkansas. UCA is also where she was initiated into the Theta Mu chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority in the fall of 2001. Kristen also has a Master of Business Administration degree with emphasis in healthcare management from Webster University. She is the Supervisor of Quality and Risk Adjustment Administration at Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. In her spare time, Kristen enjoys cooking, skincare, and makeup and spending time with her family. She has been a skincare consultant with Rodane and Fields for the past two years. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Christian Dismute. Kristen. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so glad that you all have been able to be here um, so that I can talk to you all about skincare. Um, just to give you a little, um, a little bit about me. Um, initially, I just like um, playing around with makeup. It was just more so of a hobby for me. And um, so I realized that in order for a makeup look to look its best, then the skincare needed to also be there so that the skin looks, so that the skin looks You're muted. I'm sorry, can you all hear me now? Okay, um, sorry, so let me start over. Um, so um, I was just saying that um, I got into skincare initially first by um, just um, playing around with makeup. I always like playing around with makeup. I like to uh, watch YouTube videos. I like to look through magazines and I just wanted, um, I just uh, practiced a lot with makeup. But in order to have a good makeup look, you need to have, um, you need to have a good skin. And in order to do that, you have to take care of your skin the same way that you would take care of any other part of your body. Um, so in doing that, um, I started researching different products. Um, and then um, I just kind of picked up some tips that worked for me. Um, and so when I became a consultant with Rodin and Fields, um, I started sharing those things with people and um, it helped people because when when you when you look good, you feel good, and then you're able to have a better day. Um, it's just a it's a self esteem booster. 
And so that's what I kind of push off to people because I like for people to feel good. Um, and so here are a few tips that I um, recommend to people so that they can have um, better skin or just to maintain their um, already good skin. Um, one thing that you could do is to just drink more water. Um, it's a simple thing. It's something that doctors tell you to do all the time just for good health, um, but it doesn't always um, what it's not just for good health, it also helps with skin, it helps with your hair. Um, so just staying hydrated, um, it just, um, it, it's like a natural moisturizer for the skin and also just having a healthy diet. Um, make sure that you are incorporating um, leafy, ve uh, leafy vegetables like spinach or greens, green beans, things like that that have um, antioxidants in them. Um, those come out in your skin because basically we are what we eat. Um, also something else that you could do uh, would be to just get a good good night's sleep. When we sleep at night, that's when our skin cells turn over. And so all of the bad skins, um, skin cells, uh, pretty much they turn, or, turn over and then new skin cells come, come about. When that happens, um, it, it helps with uh, fine lines. It, it helps with um, hyperpigmentation. Just a lot, a lot of things go on when you're asleep because your body is at rest. Um, so you need to make sure that you just have that time um, I know that we all get, you know, if up in the hustle and bustle and we're up late, we're doing different things. We wake up early because we have a lot to do, but you really should devote that time to just have that time to sleep. Um, another thing, which this is um, a really big one right now with the pandemic, is to just keep your hands off your face. Um, we are constantly touching different things. We're touching the remote control. We're touching door handles. We're touching our cell phones. We're touching everything. We're touching each other. We're touching ourselves. We need to not put all the germs and dirt that we pick up, not, not necessarily intentionally, but we do pick up germs and dirt and different oils. And then we apply that to our face. And all that does is it can, it can um, increase blemishes um, and it can also cause dark spots. Um, something else that touches our face that we may not even realize is our cell phone. Um, from time to time, we should just clean our cell phone off because we throw our cell phone in our purse. We put it in our, uh, we have it in our hand. We give it to our children um, and they put germs on it. So we should just clean our cell phones off. Um, we should also make sure that we are cleaning our pillowcases. Um, our pillowcases, um, they take on a lot of things. Once you put on product, and then you go to sleep at night and you go to sleep night over night over night. Um, all that is, it's just building up product. It's building up different oils in your skin. And so you want to have a clean surface. And so you should clean your pillowcase very often. And speaking of pillowcases, um, it's good to also have a satin or silk pillowcase. Um, just like a lot of times they say, uh, even with our hair, that we should sleep on a satin pillowcase because cotton pillowcases have the tendency to pull moisture um, away from you. You want to keep moisture on your skin. Um, if you've applied any type of product on your skin, you want to keep it on there at night. Um, so it's good to have that um, satin pillowcase. Um, and then another thing, uh, really right now with, pan with the pandemic, are all the masks that we are using, we need to make sure that we wash those. Um, people are, are getting what's called mask me right now. If they're, they're wearing these masks all day long, um, a lot of people have to wear them all day long because they're in, that, they're, they're in that type of profession. But you need to make sure that you are washing that mask so that it's, it's removing um, all of everything that's on your face or anything that you're coming in contact with externally, it can also get, get on your face. So you need to make sure that you are washing your mask. Um, Another thing for people who do wear makeup, make sure you wash it off at night. You, if you sleep in makeup, um, like I was saying earlier, when you're sleeping, that's a good time for your skin to just uh, replenish itself. You don't wanna keep those pores in your skin clogged. You want to give your skin a rest and just wash everything off um, and just uh, reapply it in the morning. That's what makeup is. That's the good thing about makeup is you can apply it, you have a makeup look, wash it off and start back over in the morning. So just make sure that you wash it off every night. Um, and a really big one is to just find you a skincare regimen. The thing about a skincare regimen is what works for me may not work for you. That doesn't mean that the product is bad. It just means that we all have different types of skin. And so the good thing to do when you get any type of product is to just do the hand test. Put the product on your hand, give it a day or two, See if you have any type of reaction to it. And if you don't, then you can apply it to your face. Um, but once you do find that skincare regimen, 
Most skin care regimens consist of pretty much the same things. You have a face wash, you have a toner, you have a moisturizer. Um, this face wash should be something that is not going to dry your skin out. It should be something that's moisturizing and hydrating. Um, a toner, a lot of, for a lot of years, I didn't understand why, why we needed to use a toner, but the purpose of it is to prepare your skin for the next step, which is your moisturizer. Um, so after you've washed your skin, you apply toner. So it, it basically balances out the pH balance in your skin. And it also removes any, any excess that may be on the skin. And then it prepares you to put on your moisturizer. Um, your moisturizer, in, um, for most parts, they are different from day to night. Um, a daytime moisturizer, you can have a moisturizer and then you can have one that has SPF in it. Um, a lot of uh, misconceptions are out there about um, SPF just because people don't know, but a lot of time people only wear SPFs if they're gonna be in direct sunlight or if they're going to the beach or they're going to a baseball game or something like that. You should wear SPF every single day. The sun is so hard on our skin and just because you're not sitting out in the sun all day long, even if you have an office job, you should still wear SPF because when you go outside and you walk to your car, those bad rays from the sun are beaming down on your skin. And what it's doing, it's causing wrinkles, it's causing hyperpigmentation, it's causing fine lines, um, and it can um, result in causing skin cancer. So you should use SPF every day. Um, and then at night, of course, you don't need SPF, you're in the house, um, but you should use a very moisturizing um, moisturizer. Um, and what I like to do is I use a serum. Um, I, like I said before, I don't have um, a lot of, uh, well, I've never really had uh, major skincare issues, but I did suffer from really bad oily skin. Um, every time I walked past a mirror, I would look in there and my nose was always oily. My cheeks were always oily. And I know that's something very, very common. Um, oily skin doesn't mean that you need products that's going to dry your skin out. If you do that, all you're doing is telling your skin, hey, I need to make more oil. And that's what I was doing initially. I was drying my skin out thinking I was getting rid of the oil, but I was still oily. So what you need to do is you need to hydrate your skin. If your skin is hydrated, it's not gonna produce that excess oil. It's gonna balance it out. You want a little oil, but you don't want excess oil. So what I do is I use a serum. Um, so I, I use a face wash, I use a toner, and then I use a serum at night, and then, and then I have a night cream. Um, and so in doing that, you have to find the regimen that works for you. If you have acne prone skin, then you need to find a, a, a regimen that is, um, that is suited for acne. Um, with rodent and fields, we have two acne regimens. We have one for adult acne and we have one for um, teenage acne. With adult acne, it, it primarily is around the, the chin area. And with a, a teen acne, it can be on the forehead, the cheeks. Um, and so there is a difference. And so that's why I say you need to find a regimen that is catered to you. Um, we also have um, a regimen for sensitive skin. Um, a lot of times with sensitive skin, people may have um, breakouts and they think that it's acne, but it's not acne. It's actually just, you're just really sensitive to um, just in, environmental um, things and you're just sensitive to anything, you know, you could just touch your face and you, you're get, um, you just touch your face and, and you get some type of breakout. Um, so we have a um, regimen for that. We have a regimen for um, if you have uneven skin tone or dark spots, um, that's something that's pretty common. That's probably the mo the question that I get asked about the most is um, how can I get rid of um, dark spots? Dark spots usually come from when you have acne and you're picking at your face. And then after the acne leaves, you're left with this dark spot or sometimes um, hyperpigmentation just can be from just being out in the sun. Sometimes it's just hereditary, it just all depends. But all hyperpigmentation is, it's just inflammation of the skin. And so once that inflammation occurs, um, the melatonin in our skin just mass produces and then it causes that dark spot. But it can be, um, it can be removed. And what you would just need to do is you would need to get a regimen that is um, catered to hyperpigmentation and then make sure that you use an SPF so that anything that, um, once you get the dark spots away, you don't want them to come back. So you want to make sure that you're using an SPF. 
Um, and then sometimes you may not have any type of issues with your skin. So you just want to maintain your, your already uh, good skin. And you can do that. Um, we have a regimen there. You have a wash and you have a moisturizer. And then you have um, SPF that you can use on your skin. Um, and then there's a lot of other things outside of the actual regimen. Maybe you have um, under eye bags or you have fine lines. Um, we have eye creams that you can use. Um, if you have, um, if you want to moisturize your, your actual skin, um, we have a body cream that you can use. And then um, a little bit on the cosmetic area, it's not cosmetics, but if you want to um, have longer eyelashes or you want fuller eyebrows or you want um, just an array of different things, um, then Rodin and Fields, they, we, we do have different products um, for, for whatever your needs may be. Uh, but the last tip that I do want to give you is the, the probably the most important thing is no matter what you do, you need to be consistent. Um, you need to make sure that you, um, if, if you truly want to have better skin, you need to do something um, every day. Um, and it's, it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, it's just, um, I kind of factor it in. It's kind of like brushing my teeth. I just go in, I brush my teeth, I do my regimen, and then I go ahead with my day. Um, and just make sure that you devote that time to it um, and you're consistent. It's not something, you're not going to get the results that you want if you do it for a week and then you quit. You got to make sure that you're doing it. Um, and consistency is one of those things that you can apply to different areas in your life. Um, and it's the same thing with your um, with your skincare. Um, so um, if anybody has um, any questions or if you are interested in any products with Rodin and Fields or um, if you just want to make a comment, um, I will leave my um, information um, with Wanda and LaShawn and you all can give me a call or a text and I'll also leave my website so that you can see the different products that we offer. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions from anyone? Any questions in the chat? No questions on Facebook either. Okay, great. Uh, Thank this, you. This is this is Joy Springer. I do have a question. What okay. about what about dark lines? I think you kind of mentioned that dark lines underneath your eyes. Mm -hmm. That dark line. Well, what that is is it what it it is is that your skin needs to be hydrated, um, and it is a type. It's a form of hyperpigmentation. Um, so if you wanted to um, use a full regimen, then we have a reverse brightening regimen and it would help um, with that. And what it does is it has vitamin C, which vitamin C helps to lighten the dark line underneath the eye. Um, and we also have two eye creams that also help it, it appear uh, brighter underneath there. A lot of times people want to use concealer underneath their eyes to hide it. Um, and, and I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm com I mean, that's a very common thing to do, uh, but if you want to actually treat it, um, that you would need to use something that's focused on hyperpigmentation. And we do have eye creams for that. Okay. Good Any question. other, thank you. Any other questions from the chat or Facebook live? Okay. If not, Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Kristen Disbute. We appreciate you and all the great information about skin care and your skin is definitely glowing this evening. So um, you'll <laughs> definitely um, hear more from others in the audience about questions that they might have about their skin care. Thank you so very much. Thank you all for having me. You're welcome. Our next presenter this evening is uh, Mrs. Jasmine Medley Gibson. She is a Little Rock native and she graduated from Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee, which a with a bachelor's degree in religious studies and French. While at Rhodes, Jasmine became a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Omicron Chi chapter, where she served multiple capacities. After a year serving in AmeriCorps, Jasmine obtained her Master of Public Service degree from the Clinton School of Public Service. In 2018, Jasmine completed her 200-hour yoga teacher certification with RISE Yoga Academy. Jasmine is a, currently a recruiter for City Year. After stints at the Arkansas Supreme Court and UAMS, Jasmine has practiced yoga for almost 10 years and has recently started a meditation practice. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to so, uh, Jasmine Medley Gibson.
Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me to my sisters. I appreciate you all. Um, I'm just honored to be able to um, observe Caregiver's Day with you all um, as, as I've served as a caregiver myself for my mom, who was ill about almost 10 years ago. Um, but I tell people kind of in jest, but also very seriously, um, in addition to my faith, I see a therapist and yoga, and the combination of those three things um, has saved my life. Um, I found yoga at a time when I just graduated from college. I was a dancer, and I needed some way to stay in shape and, you know, just be able to move. And so went to a yoga class, and something just clicked, and it, I fell in love with it, and it took me another about seven years before I decided, okay, I, I want to teach this. So um, like she mentioned, I have been teaching for about three years. Um, I'm actually getting ready to start a little bit more training um, to expand my, uh, my, my knowledge of yoga. But um, at, the, at the surface, yoga looks like something that's just an exercise. Um, but really, when you dig deep into it, it is something that really can help you calm your mind, calm your body, calm your spirit. So um, just I'll just go through a, a couple things that are really easy um, to do, nothing too crazy. Um, it's mostly just based on um, the breath. Um, in yoga, what we, um, what we know is that um, your body can move, but you don't wanna force your body to do anything. Um, and so how we make the body move is by um, listening to the breath and coordinating breath and movement at the same time. So often you'll see people when they're taking an inhale, they'll, you know, do a movement. When they take an exhale, they'll do a movement. So, um, yeah, so I just want to start with a little bit of um, breathing exercises. There are thousands, thousands of types of breath uh, practice in in yoga as it's you know it's a millennia's old tradition um, but there's just a few that can you know heat you up if you're cold um, or some can calm you down some can um, just help you relax um, and they're the, the one that I'll start with um, really just helps me kind of focus I don't believe that's the um, the intended uh, use of this breath, but for me, it helps me to focus. Um, it's called three-part breathing. So let me move my screen. I'm sorry you can't see my, my head, but for this purpose, you need to see my uh, midsection. So you're pretending like your midsection is in three different sections. So you've got your lower abdomen, like the middle, where we talk about like the six pack and the, like the diaphragm, um, and your chest as well, and then up here where the tops of your lungs actually are. Um, we don't realize that the lungs are really, really high in the body. So when you start this breathing, um, and if you want to do this with me, Facebook Live, um, on Zoom, wherever you are, um, just start just sitting really nice and evenly on your bottom. Um, if you kind of shift over like this, you'll feel two hard spots, and those are the ischia, the sits bones, we call them in yoga. Um, so sit nice and tall on top of those bones. Just let your shoulders kind of melt away from your ears. You know, sometimes you feel like throughout the day, your shoulders just creep up. Well, become conscious of that and just let them go away. Yeah. And then take a nice deep breath all the way from really deep in your belly. Hold that breath at the top and release through your mouth. Yeah, so you're basically just flushing everything out. So you take that breath a couple different times. And then when you start that three part breathing, you pretend like that first part of your abdomen, you just take a breath and fill that part and that's it. Hold it at the top and then release the breath out. The next time you take an inhale, you'll inhale to that second third of your midsection and release it away, good. The next time, inhale all the way up to the tops of your lungs, almost into your shoulders. Hold the breath at the top and release it away, good. So you can do that 
as many times as you want, that whole cycle is as many times as you want. And at the end, take a breath, just a really nice deep breath all the way up to the tops of your shoulders and release it away. And so when I do that, it's usually if I uh, had a long day at work or if I'm feeling frustrated, um, if my mind is racing, I uh, sit, will sit and do that breath. And instead of thinking about all the 8 million things going on in my head, I have to concentrate on those three different parts. If I'm not concentrating on those three different parts, that's where my mind starts to race. So I do that and it just helps me, even if I only you know, go through that cycle of breath once or twice, two or three times, um, it, it feels like, oh, okay, I can breathe. I don't have all this stuff going on. And then by that time, I'm like, what was I worrying about? Um, Another breath that we use a lot, you'll hear this a lot in any yoga classes, um, it's called Ujjayi Pranayama. Um, and what that is, is the victorious breath. It's a breath that kind of sounds like when you put a seashell up to your ear and you hear the ocean, that's kind of what it sounds like in the back of your throat. So you take an inhale, just like you did before, all the way to the top of your shoulders, release it away. And then the next time you take an inhale, you have your mouth kind of closed, but not glued shut, just nicely, gently shut. And when you exhale, your mouth is still shut and you're kind of releasing through the back of your throat. So it kind of sounds like the letter H. And I don't know if you all can hear me when I do it. Um, yeah, so that's, that breath is, um, it takes a lot of practice, one, to be loud like that, um, and two, just to coordinate the, mus the musculature and how it, how it all happens. But when I use that breath, it's usually because I'm cold. Um, my sweet husband likes to keep our house cold. And so if I don't feel like turning on a heater or something, I will sit and take that ujjayi breath. And because it comes from really deep inside of your, um, your abdomen, it warms everything up. And so in a yoga class, if we're doing poses or we're moving, um, we coordinate that breath, that ujjayi breath, that inhale, maybe on you know, an upward facing dog or the exhale on coming down to the belly. Um, and when you're moving and you're doing that breath, you will get really warm really quickly, believe it or not. Um, another breath that looks a little strange when you're doing it, but it also is another one that kind of helps me relax and to uh, keep my mind from racing is um, called alternate nostril breathing. And so um, you, again, start seated nicely on your, um, your bottom, feel those sits bones a little bit. Um, release the shoulders away from the ears, and then you're going to take your thumb and your index finger and middle finger. And so you take a, just a complete breath all the way up to your, uh, the tops of your lungs, release it away, and then put that thumb on one nostril, inhale through the other nostril, hold it at the top, plug the nostril with the index finger, middle finger, release the thumb, and you're exhaling out of the other nostril. Then you inhale through that nostril that's open, put the thumb over the nostril, release the other one, exhale out of that. Inhale through that nostril, plug the nostril, release the thumb, exhale there. Inhale through that nostril, plug the nostril, let go of the index finger and middle finger, exhale through that. Um, and you can do that as many times as possible. And that one takes a bit of practice because of the, the finger uh, placement, which I know in COVID right now, don't touch your face. So when you do that, wash your hands before and after when you do that breath. Um, and once you've gone through that cycle of breath, um, however many times is good for you, take that deep inhale all the way up to the tops of your lungs and release it. And, um, you know, like I said, for me, because that requires so much coordination and, and thought, 
um, your mind's not doing a whole lot of racing. It's not, um, you're not concentrating on all of the things that you've got going on or, you know, what you need to do as a caregiver or whatever the case may be. Um, of course, with yoga, um, the actual movement, which is called asana, um, it's one of the eight um, pillars, if you will, of yoga. Um, you'll find that like that movement and like you have, you have your teachers who talk about um, you know, just being solid and letting go of things and um, not gripping the mat or not doing whatever. Well, those same kinds of lessons that um, you learn or you hear about in a yoga class are the same things that you can take outside of the um, off your mat um, as a caregiver. Don't grip those small things. Let all that stuff go. Let the, the tension release. Um, because if you're taking care of yourself, you're a better caretaker for um, someone else. Um, and kind of like our first speaker, uh, she mentioned journaling. Um, for me, that's another part um, of yoga. It doesn't look like, you know, going into downward facing dog and all that stuff, but anything that helps you kind of center yourself for me is a yoga practice. Um, it's all, it's not about what something looks like. It's not about, um, you know, mastering something, but it's the practice. Um, you'll hear Yogi saying practice makes progress. So for me, um, in addition to my actual movement practice and breath practice, I journal um, and I've recently started um, meditating. Meditating is hard. Let me just say that right now. It's hard. But again, practice makes progress. Um, and so when you uh, meditate, whether that's, you know, you're writing something down in your journal, whether it's, you know, prayers or three things you're grateful for, whatever the case may be. If it's helping to release out of your body and you're not holding on to it, that's a form of meditation. Um, but for me with the actual sitting and being quiet, um, you'll hear people say, oh, well, I can't make my mind stop racing. I can't you know, clear my head. Honestly, it's, that's okay. It's totally fine if you um, have a thousand thoughts racing back and forth in your mind. What meditation says is, it's okay, you have all these things going on in your head, acknowledge that these thoughts are there and then let them go by. So you can, you know, it's almost like you can sit outside and watch clouds go by. You're not gonna fixate on them, but you're just gonna acknowledge that they're floating by. So with meditation, um, because it is um, a more difficult practice, start, start small, um, maybe try to sit for 10 or 15 seconds, not thinking about anything in, in particular, um, not trying to control, you know, release the grip that you have on your thoughts, um, not trying to um, stop thinking about anything, but just sit quietly, try one of those breaths or not even concentrate on, on, concentrate on a breath, just sit and try that for a while and then increase the time um, because you're practicing it and um, you get better at it as you practice more. So um, when I first started practicing yoga, I didn't really understand um, beyond the physical part of it. I just thought it was a great workout. But um, in that yoga practice and my evolution in it, it has helped me to not focus on small things as much. Um, when I was serving as a caregiver for my mom, um, I was very much like, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. But now I have to spend time just focusing on helping myself. So I take that hour a day or whatever it might be to go to a class or to sit and meditate. Um, just, you know, anything that is going to help refill your, your proverbial tank, maybe journaling, maybe meditating, uh, maybe reading a book or watching your favorite TV show, whatever that case is for you, that is a practice. And that um, can help refill your tank and make sure that, you know, if you are serving as a caregiver, then you're being good to yourself so you can be good to somebody else. So I'd love to connect if anybody has any questions about yoga, if you are interested in kind of starting um, to learn about yoga or, you know, wanting to find a place to uh, practice, please reach out. I would love to um, just connect and kind of see where it is that you might want to go and and we can go from there. Okay, any questions in the chat or on Facebook for uh, Mrs. 
uh, Gibson, we thank you so much, Miss Gibson, for such great information. Oh my gosh, I feel so relaxed. I feel like taking a nap now. Is it too early to take a nap? <laughs> Naps are always good. Okay, great. You we really relax. Okay, great. What is that question? Um, do you have any tips regarding keeping your breath at a steady pace when you are doing a rigorous flow? And this is from a yoga teacher. She's getting her yoga teacher certification. Great. That, what was the last part about the yoga teacher certification? Uh, this is from Shakina uh, Daniel. I hope I'm pronouncing your right, name right. She says she's actually in the middle of earning uh, her yoga teacher certification. Awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations to that. They don't tell you when you're going through yoga teacher training how emotionally taxing it is, but it's so worth it because you're learning more about yourself and how to share this practice with other people. But um, as far as um, keeping a good pace with your breath, that is honestly something I'm still working on over 10 years later. Um, one thing that helps me is to, um, for inhales, if I'm just doing like ujjayi breath or just, you know, taking deep breaths, um, counting to four, one, two, three, four, not that fast, but, you know, as, as quickly or slowly as you want, and then holding that breath a little bit at the top, so not exhaling, not inhaling, and then releasing the breath on the same count, so trying to make them even. Um, and, you know, sometimes your breath is faster, maybe it's because you've got a lot going on, Sometimes maybe you are more relaxed and it's easier to, um, to slow that breath down. Um, there is no wrong pace for it um, because everyone's different. Um, in a class where if my teacher says, hold something for five breaths, for me, that's like 10 because I breathe fast. Um, for you, it might be three, you might breathe slower, but um, try that counting maybe to five, taking you know the count of five all the way uh, to the top of your breath, holding it for a minute for just a couple seconds, and then releasing the breath on, on the count of five. Um, and that's something that helps me um, to slow down my breath, but also to make sure that like my inhale isn't super fast and my exhale is super long. It, it helps to balance those two out. Okay, are there any other questions in the chat or the Facebook Live for Mrs. Gibson? Okay, if there are not any other questions, thank you so much, Mrs. Gibson, for uh, great information. And I hope that we've all learned something. I know I did, and we'll be able to use those. And we can also um, be happy to share your contact information with any of the audience uh, members that might want that. Thank you all so much. And now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Springer, who will close us out for this evening. Uh, thank you once again, Mrs. Uh, King and Mrs. Uh, Kelly, Mrs. Simpson and Mrs. Gibson. We have had a wonderful evening. I was so excited uh, that I didn't tell you who I was when I uh, welcomed you early, but you can see my name here on our Zoom. Uh, that I don't think that that's really necessary. However, I am Joy Springer, and I serve as the program chair for Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Beta Pi Omega Chapter. And it is my pleasure to work with these excellent women in presenting our program to you this evening. 2020 Impact Day, Caring for the Caregivers. We've learned about uh, techniques to use when you're a caregiver. We've learned about skin care to take care of ourselves while we're giving care. And then finally, we're learning how to practice yoga and making sure that we relieve ourselves of anything that's taking place with us that's causing any problems for us. So once again, on behalf of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Beta Pi Omega Chapter, we thank you once again for joining us this evening. Have a good evening.